letter to Corinthians. Even though it's called second or two Corinthians in our Bibles, there are multiple clues within this letter that it's not the second thing he ever wrote to the church of his form. Paul started this Jesus community in Corinth some time ago on one of his missionary journeys. You can read this book in Acts chapter 15. And after moving on, Paul got a report that things were not going well there. So he wrote the letter that we call 1 Corinthians to correct these problems. And it appears that many in the church rejected Paul's teaching about them and rebelled against his support. So we learn in this letter that Paul had followed up in person with what he calls the painful visit. And after that, he sent a letter which he says was written with anguish and tears. So after all these measures, most, but not all, of the Christians realized their arrogance and they apologized to Paul. They wanted to reconcile. And so Paul wrote this letter to assure them of his love and commitment. The letter's been designed with three main sections, each addressing a distinct topic. So Paul first finalizes this reconciliation with the Corinthians. Then in chapters 8 and 9, he addresses the topic of forgotten generosity. And in the final chapters, Paul challenges the remaining Corinthians who still reject him. Let's dive in and you'll see how it all works. So Paul opens up by thanking the God of all mercy and comfort who brought peace and encouragement to him and the Corinthians during this time of division and dispute. He acknowledges that things have been tense since his painful visit and he makes clear he's forgiven them, he wants an open and honest relationship. But why had they rejected Paul in the first place? Well, we discover later in this letter that the Corinthians had disregarded Paul. He was poor, he earned a meager living through manual labor, he was under constant persecution and suffering, he was often homeless, and to top it off, he wasn't a very impressive public speaker. And so once the Corinthians were exposed to other, more wealthy, impressive Christian leaders, they started to think less of Paul, they were actually ashamed of him. So Paul responds first by showing that their elevation of these leaders, simply because of their wealth and eloquence, is a betrayal of Jesus. It shows a totally distorted value system. True Christian leadership, Paul says, is not about status or self-promotion. Paul depicts himself and the other apostles as captive slaves to King Jesus, who's leading them on a procession of triumph. Paul's job isn't to be impressive, but rather to point people to the one who is. Jesus. He then alludes to the recent demand of the Corinthians that he provide some letters of recommendation to prove his authority and credentials, and this is ridiculous to Paul. Their church wouldn't even exist if he hadn't started it, and so he says they are his proof of genuine leadership. They are his letter of recommendation. He cleverly quotes from the prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel, saying that God's Spirit has written his letter of recommendation on their hearts as his new covenant people. The Corinthians shouldn't need any more proof than that. Now, the mention of the New Covenant, it leads Paul into a long comparison between the Old Covenant between God and Israel that was mediated by Moses, and the New Covenant between God and Corinthians mediated by Jesus and the Spirit. The Old Covenant made at Mount Sinai, it was truly glorious. It made Moses himself shine with God's glory, but that glory eventually faded. Not to mention the fact that the laws of that covenant were ineffective at truly transforming Israel. But the new covenant, by comparison, is even more glorious because the resurrected Jesus is the very glory of God and he lives on forever. And it's his spirit that's now transforming people to become more faithful just like Jesus himself. Now this all sounds amazing. I mean, who doesn't want to share in God's own glory? But Paul goes on to show how the paradox of the cross turns upside down the Corinthians' ideas of glory and success. After all, Jesus' glorious exaltation as king took place through his suffering, execution, and death. On the cross, Jesus revealed God's salvation. He died for the sins of the world to reconcile people to God. But the cross does even more. It reveals God's character. He's a being of utter self-giving, suffering love that seeks the well others. The cross also reveals a new cruciform way of life. And Paul's goal is that his life and ministry imitates the cross. So although his apostolic career has been marked by humility, suffering, by poverty, it was all to serve the Corinthians. And so when they disapprove of Paul's poverty and suffering, they disapprove of Jesus too. Paul's way of life and leadership is actually the proof that he authentically represents the crucified and risen Jesus. Paul really wants to reconcile with the Corinthians, but he won't let things lie until they've been transformed and embrace this upside-down paradox of a cross. After this passionate 
appeal, Paul moves on to address the topic of forgotten generosity. So the Jewish Christians back in Jerusalem, they had fallen into poverty due to a famine. And Paul was raising money among the new churches that he started, full of mostly non-Jews. They would all send a relief gift as a symbol of their unity in the Messiah, Jesus. And so many of his churches, they were thrilled to give. But the Corinthians, in the midst of all this conflict with Paul, hadn't saved up for the gift. And for Paul, this isn't just about money. It's another sign that the Corinthians have not been transformed by the gospel about Jesus, which, at its heart, is a story of generosity. Paul says, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus the Messiah, that even though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. He's telling the story of the gospel through financial metaphors. Jesus gave up his glorious honor, or wealth, and he lowered himself to die like a poor slave, so that other people who are impoverished through sin and death can be exalted and become wealthy through the riches of God's grace. To be a Christian is to let this story sink deep into your mind and heart, letting it transform you into someone who's more generous, more willing to share your life and resources to help others. In the final section of the letter, Paul focuses on the main source of his conflict with the Corinthians, that group of impressive leaders that he sarcastically calls super apostles. So they came to Corinth promoting themselves and bad-mouthing Paul as a poor, unsuccessful leader. And at the risk of sounding self-promoting, Paul says, do these guys really want to compare credentials, he can totally take them on. Are they Jewish Bible experts? Well, so is Paul. He was a Pharisee, for goodness sakes. He has the whole Bible memorized. Do they want to brag about their superior knowledge of Jesus? Paul has actually seen and hung out with the risen Jesus. He's actually had visions of Jesus' heavenly throne room. But more importantly, Paul has given his entire life to the mission of Jesus. He sacrificed comfort and stability, and he never asked the Corinthians for money. Unlike the super apostles who charged a lot, Paul earned his own living. But, Paul says, he refuses to brag about these accomplishments because these aren't the things that really matter as a Christian. Instead, what he'll brag about is how flawed and how weak he is because it's in those inadequacies that he discovers the love and mercy of Jesus. Or as Jesus once told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, my power is made perfect through weakness. Paul concludes the letter with a sober warning to the Corinthians. They need to check themselves. Their contempt for Paul, his way of life, their love for the super apostles, it all shows that they don't grasp who Jesus is on a fundamental level. They're not living like transformed followers of Jesus, and so he invites them once again to humble themselves before the love of Jesus. 2 Corinthians gives us a really unique window into the life of Paul and the paradox set before us by the cross of Jesus. The cross challenges our values, our ways of seeing the world. We value success, education, wealth, but God values humility and weakness because his love and power were made known through the suffering, death, and the resurrection of Jesus. The cross also unleashes the transforming power and presence of the Spirit to empower Jesus' followers to take up his cruciform way of life and make it their own. And that's what 2 Corinthians is all about. That's the book of 2 Corinthians. So we know that uh, the book of 1 Corinthians was written by the Apostle Paul, and so is the book of 2 Corinthians. And how? So, I don't know if you know, but the book of 1 Corinthians, where, was, where did Paul write the book of 1 Corinthians? Where was it? It was in Ephesus. No, after niya, we know the story that uh, after Paul uh, went from Macedonia, he went to uh, Achaia. Sa babaho yun ng Philippians, yung uh, Corinthians. Ano? Corinth is a church uh, which is in the province of Achaia. And uh, Paul went there as well and started the ministry. You can find that in the book of Acts, chapter number 18. Okay? Chapter 18, you find Paul starting the ministry in Corinth. Sino nga yung dalawang kilalang tao na... Dalawa sa mga kilalang tao na nanggaling sa Corinth. Who are these uh, prominent New Testament characters? Not too prominent, but known New Testament characters that Paul found in Corinth. Sino nga yun? 
Priscilla and Aquila, like Joel and Chini. Yeah, Priscilla and Aquila. A husband and a wife that through the business of the Apostle Paul, uh, the Evangelist Paul, he met these, uh, this couple and uh, soon became one of the disciples, even of Apollos. Okay? Pati si Apollos. So you also find Apollos there. At doon po yung makikita sa 1 Corinthians. Sa, sa Corinth, you find also that there was a, uh, what do you call that? The leader of the synagogue who got saved. Ano? Marami hong mga himala nangyari. But because of the place, dahil sa lugar ng Corinth, because of the, the location of Corinth, which is the center of trade and, 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 uh, and immorality, makikita po natin that uh, there have been so many problems in the book. Ano, doon sa church na nasa Corinth. And I hope you learned a lot uh, with that First Corinthians. Now, after, can you imagine the Apostle Paul would write a letter filled with rebukes from, from the start? And it, there was no chapter and verses before, are you with me? It was a long letter. And with this letter are the problems that are uh, that are be being dealt in uh, in the book uh, in the place of Corinth in the Corinth church. And so Paul would mention this. So just try to imagine if you were one of them. If you if we are the Corinthian church, are you with me? With the pastor and with the members, the apostles before, when there was no Bible yet, the Bible is not yet completed. The apostles are the one that gives the word of God to the churches. Are you with me? And so, when this letter was received, it's not just people of God. It includes their pastor, it includes their workers, it includes all of them. And then, Paul wrote this letter. You will be against the Apostle Paul. And so also, we find in 2 Corinthians and some part of 1 Corinthians, na merong content that there are certain people who are against him. Are you with me? It's hard to understand the Apostle Paul. Okay? And so, uh, pinakita kanina, no, uh, we have, we, we've seen in the introduction on what would be the reasons why. Or maybe Paul is not uh, too cool to be with. Maybe when he was there, he's too serious. We really don't know. Or maybe Paul was, uh, the Bible tells us he was not a, a good speaker. He was more of a good apostle and uh, a writer. Not like the eloquent preachers around there. And, uh, and, and maybe Paul physically... Are you with me? Siyempre, pag medyo mukot sa akin din, ang hirap pakinggan, ano? We, we, we really don't know the exact reasons why the Corinthians do not believe him much. Some of them. But praise the Lord with the letter of 1 Corinthians and some things that, have, that happened, we find that somehow the current church had a positive response. Okay? And so let's study the book of 2 Corinthians. Since Paul's first letter, the Corinthian church had been swayed by false teachers who steered the people against Paul. They claimed he was fickle, proud, unimpressive in appearance and speech, dishonest and unqualified as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they would just maybe telling themselves and others, we don't think that he is fit to be an apostle. So Paul, sabi dito, uh, Paul sent Titus to Corinth. Titus is one of the pastors during those times. He was a pastor in Crete. But Paul sent him first there to deal with these difficulties. And upon his return, rejoiced to hear of the Corinthians' change of heart. Paul wrote this letter to express his thanksgiving for the repentant majority. Maybe not all are convinced, but the majority of the church were repentant and to appeal to the rebellious minority to accept his authority. So Paul was thankful for what happened to the majority. Nung, nung nabalitaan niya kay Titus yung mga nangyari, then he was refreshed and somehow in his letter continually rebuked 
Hindi kasi pwedeng maliitin ang ganong problema. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And so Paul, even in this letter, he could have, you know, uh, he could have not just noticed that or uh, ano ba yung baliwalain na lang, maliitin na lang ni Pablo yung problema. But in the church, listen, are you with me? Rebellious attitude is a serious concern. Okay? And so Paul continually proved to them that no, you don't know me. I am your apostle. And uh, maybe there are really some people na sinisiraan ng Apostle Pablo. Amen? Are you with me? Now, we know that the writer of the, of the Second Corinthians is the Apostle Paul. External and internal evidence am, uh, amply support the Pauline authorship of this letter. As with Romans, the problem of 2 Corinthians is with its lack of unity. Ang nagiging problema lang naman kung bakit, why other questions the authorship of Paul is the construction of the letter. Parang bakit iba-iba ng topic. But actually, uh, it should not be a reason. Many critics theorize that chapters 10 to 13 were not a part of this letter in its original form because their tone contrasts with that of chapters 1 to 9. So, some explains, if you would be reading, and we will be reading 1st, 2nd Corinthians very soon, you would find chapter 1 to 9, Paul was a sweet encourager, and uh, he was so happy with the result. But on chapter 10, again, you would see him rebuking. So some suggest that maybe chapter 10 to Chapter 10 to 13 is a letter of Paul that was attached to the first, Second Corinthians. It could have been the, uh, an earlier letter. Para bang kinukumpira was the rebuke that you received before. And thank the Lord, you're okay now. It could be like that. So, it's just a suggestion. But surely, both of them were written by the Apostle Paul. Kasi again, this is one letter, Second Corinthians, but... You find chapter 10 to 13 somehow was, uh, Paul has had a different tone of speech to them. Okay? So, medyo pagali. Okay? Several problems arise with these attempts to dissect 2 Corinthians. Chapters 10 to 13 do not fit Paul's description of the lost letter of chapter 2 to 4. But uh, these are just suggestions. Mahirap kasi dahil we are not in that time. But one thing is sure, all of the words of 2 Corinthians came out from the Apostle Paul with Timothy with him. Okay? So, yun po yung ating uh, uh, conclusion. The difference in tone of these two parts of 2 Corinthians is easily explained by the change of focus from the repentant majority to the rebellious minority. So, pwede rin ganon. To the majority that are repentant, Paul was encouraging them. And to the minority dun sa iilan na may mga problem, Paul was telling them and dealing still with them. And both is still because of the love of the Apostle. Are you, I understand Paul as a leader because as a leader, hindi naman porkit ganit ka, hindi ka na pwedeng maging masaya. It's not necessarily that you're angry, you cannot be happy. There are some times that you... That, that when a leader uh, speaks to God's people, he's sweet, he's uh, 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 meek, but there, there should be times na dapat medyo magagalit pag may mga dapat mapagalitan. Amen? So, you find it here. And so, now the time of 2 Corinthians, the, time, the part, of, part of the background of 2 Corinthians can be found in the time of the 1 Corinthians that we studied. Paul was in Ephesus when he wrote 1 Corinthians and expected Timothy to visit Corinth and return to him. If you remember the story, mga kapatid, Paul was persecuted in what city of Macedonia? Sige nga, review nga, review. Kung talagang naalala nyo pa. What was the city where Paul was persecuted in his mission journey? Before Corinth, bago siya pumunta sa Corinth, there was a city where he was really persecuted and he even ran to Berea. At hanggat sa Berea, he was followed by these persecutors. Thessalonica. So, 
The city where Paul was persecuted was Thessalonica. Just try to have an imaginary map. I, I, I know you, you saw that many times. Thessalonica, Philippi, is in the upper part of the map that I showed you. It is a part of the province of Macedonia. And so Paul escaped from that persecution and went to uh, uh, Corinth. He went, the, he went first to Athens. What, did ha what happened to Athens? When Paul was running from the persecutors, he went from Thessalonica to Berea, di ba, na, na natin, and these were more noble than they of Thessalonica. The people of Berea, the Jude Judaism people there, they are not like the Thessalonican, Thessalonian Jewish. They did not want to kill Paul. They listened to him. They searched the scripture if Paul was telling the truth. It was not the Berean church, but the Jewish people in Berea. They were more noble than the Jewish people of Thessalonica. Dissenting tao sila. Hindi porkit bago yung narinig nila, gusto na nilang ipapatay. So what happened? But because of the, these Thessalonian Jews, they were running, they, they were running uh, to Paul to capture him. Paul went down to Athens. Tama? Sa Greece. What happened to Athens? Act 17. Ano nangyari sa Athens? Joel. Nag-preach siya. Okay? Saan siya nag-preach? Sa Mars Hill. Sabi niyo nga, Mars Hill. Mars Hill is a place where people gathered for knowledge. The Greeks wants that. And so Paul stood there and he saw the, 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 the place in the, to the unknown God whom you worship, ignorantly worship. So Paul preached the gospel and many people believe him as well. But after that, Athens is nearby Corinth. So Paul traveled from Athens to Corinth, okay? And started a ministry in Corinth, okay? And so he met Priscilla and Aquila. And then we know that... Uh, he was uh, tired of preaching to the Jewish people because they would always persecute him. And so he said, from now on, I will go to the Gentile. But before it happened, a Jew, which is the leader of the synagogue, got saved in Corinth in Acts 18. And so, after that, he went to Ephesus and he went back, okay? And during his time in Ephesus, he wrote First and Second Corinthians. Here, makikita po natin, upon returning to Ephesus, Paul regretfully wrote his sorrowful letter to urge the church to discipline the leader of the opposition. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. Let us read a part of it. Chapter 2, 1 to 11. Chapter 2, 1 to 11. Pasensya na kayo yung video kayo sa labas, maingay. At di naman natin sila masisi dahil nung mga nakaraang mga wala pa tayong aircon, maingay din tayo. Ano, kaya buti na lang nakalak na yung ating door. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Are you there? So let us study. Let us read. But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad? But the same which is made sorry by me. Sabi niya gano'n, nakita niya yung uh, puso ni Paul, ano? Ang labig niya sa Corinthians, sabi niya. Sana pagbalik ko dyan, oh, hindi ko na kayo mapapagalitan. Kasi pag pinagalitan ko kayo, di masasaktan kayo. Eh sino ba nagpapasaya sa akin? Di ba't kayo rin sa Panginoon? Eh tapos malulungkot din kayo. Nag-guess nyo? Do you get what the Apostle Paul was telling? And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow from them, of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. So he, probably it was, I said there are two views about chapter, verse 4. Would it be 1 Corinthians? Because as we have studied 1 Corinthians, talaga naman puro rebuke. It, re, it is really filled with rebukes. Are you with me? But there are people who also believe, there are Bible scholars who also believe that Paul uh, uh, more than 1 Corinthians wrote two letters before this happened. Kaya, yun po yung mga possibilities. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be regrieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. Verse 5. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I might not overcharge you all. 
Sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. So verse 7, are you there? So that contrary wise, he ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. So, because of the letter of the Apostle Paul, they blame the person who is the problem. But after that, Paul wasn't telling them, it's too much, it's fine now. Uh, uh, sabi niya ganun, hindi niyo na siya dapat uh, ganyanin. Verse 8, Wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Okay, stop blaming. Start to love. For this, to this end also did I write that I might not know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. So, there was a somebody who is not named in the Bible, maybe in heaven we will know, that continually talk to the Corinthian believers and discrediting the apostleship of Paul. And so Paul started to let them see that and told them that you forgive him. For your sakes forgave I in, in the person of Christ. Because if there was somebody that should be hurt the most, it was the Apostle Paul. This is a reality. Mahirap talaga yung sasabihan mo ng isang bagay na masama ang isang tao. Pagkatapos, malalaman ng lahat, pero hindi totoo. Ngayon, kung ikaw naman si Apostle Paul, if you're the Apostle Paul, be sure you're right with God. That's why Paul was okay. But, but it hurts, you know. Paul was okay, okay, you, you tell me I'm not an Apostle, you tell me I'm weak. Tell everything you want. But Paul is concerned about the church. Explaining himself through letters. And telling them that it is not, I am not a problem. I am telling you the truth. There is carnality in the church going on. There is, a, there is a spirit of division going on. There is a spirit of lust going on. And you've got to change. That's what the Apostle Paul was telling. And so, after that, soon it was found out that this guy, who really, really don't know, is the problem. And then after that, Verse number uh, 11, Lest Satan, are you there? Hello, read it. Verse 11, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. You've got to check these simple words of Paul. Check always your heart if there is any root of bitterness. It is a wile, one of the wiles of the devil. The devil wants God's children to put burdens inside their hearts and this carnal flesh would take care of it and then you will be filled with hatred to such person or persons or groups. Kaya nga nagkakaroon sila ng division kasi minsan grupo-grupo na. And that should be destroyed because it is a one of the wiles of the devil. Are you with me? Hindi lang huyan sa church, pati huyan sa pamilya. Pati huyan sa mga magkakaibigan. Pati huyan sa kahit anong relasyon. Pag nagtanim ka ng galit, lagi kang mag-iingat. Ngayon, hindi naman din pwede hindi ka magalit. Pwede ba yun? Hindi ka magagalit? Kinukuha na kinukuha yung ulam mo? Di ba mahirap yan? Yung luto ka ng luto? It is impossible not to be angry. If somebody does you wrong. Are you with me? But, be angry and sin not. That's what the Bible says. So, as we cater this flesh, magkakaroon tayo ng hatred. Bakit si Nigel, lagi na lang yung mga kanta na kinakanta, hindi ko paborito. O, oh, mga gano'n, pwedeng gano'n. So, you, pwede kang magtanim. Hindi mo na tuloy makikita yung maganda. Ay, nagsulwiling naman pala ako. <laughs> you see, I mean, when there is bitterness, you don't see the good out of anything. And what will happen? It will trouble you. It will trouble the church. It will trouble yourself. And you will not be happy. That's why Paul was telling them, you check your heart. I already forgiven that person. Okay? And so, you affirm him of your love. If he is a brother or a sister in the Lord, do not always forget this truth that we are God's forgiven children. And so as Christ has forgave us, so we forgive. And how to do that? 
You've got to show your love. Affirm your love. That's what he says. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. We are not ignorant. Kaya parang pag, pag ako medyo nagtatanim na ako ng galit sa sarili ko, tao lang po ako, kahit pastor niyo po ako. Ba, teka, hindi naman tama to. Eh ako, dami ko rin kasalanan sa Panginoon. Pinatawad ako ng Diyos. Are you with me? I was forgiven. How will I continually have this kind of heart? Okay? So, Do you get the point of the Apostle Paul? Hello? Hello? So, yun po yung pinopoint out niya sa kanila. And he was relieved of what happened. And then, there in Macedonia, Paul wrote 2 Corinthians. However, sabi niya ganun dito, a minority opposition still persisted. So, there are still people who do not believe him. Ah, hindi. Huwag na natin pakinggan niya ang Apostle Pablo na yun. Pakinig na lang tayo. May pastor naman tayo. Listen, Paul is not the pastor of Cory Church. He's not the pastor of Cory Church. He is the one who started the ministry. He could have been their fir first pastor, but he was a missionary of the Cory Church. He was an evangelist. But moreover, he is an apostle. Wala na ko kasi tayong apostle ngayon, kaya ang hirap i-apply gano. So yung principle na lang ng leadership. Ngayon, may pastor kayo, pero si Apostle Paul nun, apostle siya. Sila yung nagbibigay ng salita ng Diyos sa mga churches. Sila yung nagsasabi. And just try to imagine, he is being discredited by some people. And there are some who believe these uh, uh, people who are destroying his name. And then, what happened is when Paul visited Macedonia, he, he wrote 2 Corinthians and sent it with Titus and another brethren. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 16 to 24. Ready, go. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with his grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord, declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, are you there? Read, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Our brethren be inquired of, they are the messenger of the churches, and the glory of Christ. So, makikita po natin that it was Titus who brought the letter to second uh, to, to the Corinthians. Brought second Corinthians to the Corinthian believers. Okay po? And it is probably in the province of Macedonia. Okay? And then, pagkatapos po nun, after Paul gave the letter, he visited again. Kaya nga, on chapter 2, di ba, as we read, I hope when I get back there. So he was planning to get back and visit. I hope when I get back there, peace na tayo. Sabi ni Apostle Paul. I hope when I get back there, there will be no problems. Because when you're lonely, you, you're giving me happiness. And then, how can, it, how can it be? So Paul was telling them, I will visit there soon. So yun po yung uh, nangyari. And uh, Paul then made his third trip to Corinth. And, and on his third trip to Corinth, he wrote the book of Romans. Okay? So, first trip, book of Acts, chapter 18. Okay, ho? Pagkatapos, we really don't know what happened next. Kasi ang sabi doon sa introduction, maybe he visited again and rebuked personally the people. And then after that, he wrote second Corinthians. Pagkatapos doon, bumalik ulit siya. And when he came there, sinulat naman niya yung book of Romans. Okay? I hope we can uh, really study carefully yung life of Paul, yung journey ni Apostle Paul para lalong tumanim sa isip nyo yung nangyari, okay? Now, where is Christ in the book of 2 Corinthians? As we always study, that the Bible is a Christocentric book. Ano nga? Christocentric book. That means in all of the books of the Bible, Christ is there. In all of the books of the Bible, Christ is there. And so in chapter 1 verse 5, you can find that Christ is the believer's comfort. Chapter 1 verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 5, Christ is the believer's comfort. Amen? Amen. Ready, read. 
For as the suffering of Christ abounded in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. Not just comfort, but triumph. Triumph. Chapter 2, verse 14. Can one of the young people, ladies, read 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14? Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes them to triumph in, hello, Christ. Where do we triumph? In Christ. Si Cristo ang tagumpay natin. Kaya kahit wala pang tagumpay, matagumpay ka na kay Cristo. Next, Young People Boys, uh, chapter 4, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. He is the Master. He is the Lord. Another. He is chapter 4, verse 6. Sa mga may asawa, married men, chapter 4, verse 6. Can somebody read chapter 4, verse 6? For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God to the face of Jesus. So who is Jesus Christ in chapter 4, verse 6? The light. The light. Ayan. Siyang ilaw. Christ is the light. Amen? Look at that. Look at that. Ang ganda niya. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Basahin niya ulit natin. Everybody, are you there? Amen. Ready, go. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse number uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 4. Why? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see? Sino raw yung mga bulag? You mind in any wala kay Cristo. Are you with me now? And the only way for these people to be enlightened is Christ. Amen. And so, when you receive Christ as the light, then you have the light already. Then you have to shine as a light to the world as well. Do you see the the way of God? If you have been enlightened by the light which is the Lord, the, the Lord Jesus Christ then you show the light to the blinded ones through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So, Christ is the light. And then next, He is also, chapter 5 verse 21, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 from the mummies. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Nakita niyo yung palitan? Yung pinakita kanina sa drawing. Have you seen the drawing a while ago? The king became a slave so that slaves would become uh, children of the king. You see that? So, also here, what happened to that? Ano nga sa mga nag ng Bible school? What is that? The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men might become the sons of God. Ano tawag doon? Substitute. Thank you, Sister Chini. Ano ba? Bible school, ha? Sa substitution. Ano? Jesus is our substitute. There was a substitution happen. When men cannot go to God because of sin, God substituted His Son for men. And so Christ suffered the death of the cross so that people who supposed to go to hell would have the chance to go to God in heaven. Amen? So, substitute. Christ is our substitute. Chapter 9, verse 15. Who is Christ in 2 Corinthians ch chapter 9, verse 15? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Thanks be for His priceless. For His priceless. For unspeakable, priceless gift. Okay? So, who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Our priceless gift. Okay, huh? And then also our owner. 2 Corinthians 10, 7. Ready, go. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? That he is Christ. Let him of himself think this again. That is, he is Christ. Oh, pag-aari tayo ni Lord. Sabi niya, nakatingin ba kayo sa itsura? Baka si Paul, hindi ka guwapuhan. Uh -huh. Nakatingin ba kayo sa statue? Baka si Paul, yung medyo pagtinignan mo, parang laging may sakit. Okay, ho? Sabi niya, nakatingin ba kayo sa itsura? Sabi niya ganon, lagi niyong tatandaan, kung kayo ay kay Kristo, kay Kristo rin ako. 
lahat tayo pag-aari ng Panginoon. Amen? So, so walang magyayabang na ah, ako, matipuno ako, ako, maganda ako, ako, guwapo ako, ako, mataas ang boses ko, ako, sintonado ko. <laughs> ano man yan, lahat tayo ay pag-aari ng Panginoon Jesus. Amen? We are God's ownership. Are you with me? So I hope and I pray that uh, we learn today something on 2 Corinthians and that power. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. If you're there, say amen. amen. Ready, read. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. The power of the Christian is the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Siya po ang ating kapangyarihan. He was mentioning his weakness of the flesh. But the Bible tells us, Paul was continually telling the people, My strength is not my own power. My power is of God. And so during my weakest time, then I am made strong. For everybody, weakness is not wickedness. It's two different things. Okay? Pag sinabing weakness sa Bible, when you read weakness in the Bible, it's about infirmities of the flesh. Physical disabilities. Wickedness is sin. It is two different things. Hindi mo weakness ang mangopia. Wickedness yun. Ha? Hindi weakness ang mangopia. Hindi. Every time I see the answer, I copy it. Hindi. It's not a weakness. It's wickedness. Okay? Weakness is something that is uh, uh, in our uh, physical body. Bulang tayo, pipi tayo, uh, mabilis tayo hingalin. Ayan, natin pa pang mga bagay. Okay? Let's all sign up, please. I hope we learned something on the book, 2 Corinthians, the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthian believers.